just when you thought the hero shooter genre had taken over the entire world and that's all any developer would ever make ever again, the Battle Royale survival shooter stepped back up and said, hey, let's not forget about us now. Ladies and gentlemen, I am the Noob Fridge Troy Blackburn. This is your MMOBomb.com first look at Last Man Standing, a brand new free-to-play Battle Royale survival shooter just recently launched on Steam. We're going to go through the game, take a look, see what all it has to offer, some of the features, how the game runs, and together help you decide if it's something that you think you want to try out and download, once again, completely for free, by the way. Now, the quick and dirty version of this game, uh, you can compare it to King of the Kill, the spinoff game from H1Z1. Good old survival battle royale. You run around, loot some weapons, loot some armor, loot some med kits, things of that nature. Then you run around the map, killing everything and everybody that moves, hoping to survive. Meanwhile, the map is closing in around you and everybody's slowly being concentrated to one small area of the map. Last man standing wins. Difference being, of course, this one is going to be free to play, free to download, free to try. And as most of these games usually go, free to die. As you can see, we are currently scrolling through some of the customization options available in the game. Now, these are available in a couple of different ways. First of all, you can earn loot crate drops simply by playing the game and leveling up your profile level. Every time you catch a level, you're going to get a loot crate drop, which has a chance to drop all different sorts of cosmetics and weapon skins. You can also, as you can see on some of these cosmetic items, they have gold costs. The gold is currency you earn simply by playing the game. You can unlock the ones you like directly or just wait and get them through loot crate drops. And we'll be opening a loot crate here in just a minute. Just wanted to go through and show some more customization. These are emotes. As you can see, some of those are unlockable through loot crates as well as gold purchases. You just drag those over to your bar and then you can use those in game, do different emotes, face palms, surrenders. Here we've got weapon skins, different ones available, and these do not appear to be unlockable through the gold currency system. These appear to be only available through the loot crate system. A quick look at the stat screen. You can go back and see your history of the game. Not a lot to see there for me so far. Not a ton of hours in, just enough to sort of get a feel for the game. But let's go ahead and jump over and open a loot crate that I have already ready just by playing the game. We've got a new emote, we've got a weapon skin, and we've got a referee t-shirt. Some exciting new customization options available from the customized tab down at the bottom. And a quick cut real quick just to show off uh, the crates that are available through direct purchase from cash. This seems to be, from what I've seen so far, the only cash option available. The only way to really spend money is through buying various loot crate drops, so no pay to win to be found so far. And as you can see, there is also a leaderboard available if you're interested in that sort of thing. You will not see the name Noob Fridge anywhere on there, so don't bother pausing the game. No need to go back and try to find Noob Fridge. Uh, I am not going to be there. A couple of different play options. Squad play will be available in the future. I'm not really sure at this point how many people can be in a squad. My first guess would be probably two, three at the most. There's also a free roam version where you can go in and just sort of explore the map and get to know the map and get a feel for the game. I would suggest going into that first because you're going to want to adjust your video settings, FOV, things like that. Especially the video settings. Every time that you change most of the video settings, you're going to have to completely restart the game client. So you don't want to be in an actual game your very first time doing that. So go into the practice mode, reset your video settings, and get everything the way you want it. I believe the FOV starts at a base of 60. Pretty sure I cranked mine up to 90, which I believe is the max, before I even ever loaded into a game, because I'm that guy who can't handle the little narrow FOV. Now this game does take a couple of minutes to load up, at least on my system, so we're going to skip past a little bit of the loading screen, you're not really missing anything. You will notice here that when the game very first loads up, I, I do have a few frame rate drops here and there, but people are loading into this little small area. I'm probably still loading in assets as we go. So that little frame rate drop at the very beginning isn't anything to be too concerned about. Um, as we're gonna see right here, the first thing you're gonna do is load into a little lobby where you sort of wait for everything to begin. Gives about two and a half minutes for, give everybody a chance to get loaded in, get all the assets loaded, get in there, make sure they're running around, do some customizing and just, run around get a feel for the game if you've never really played before the uh best thing to see in here is we're going to run around and take a look at some of the folks here's a guy with a pretty cool outfit that he's accumulated and we're going to run around and take some take a look at some of the textures of the game you'll notice right off the bat uh there's a little bit of graphical pop in especially when it comes to the grass and some of the terrain and then some of the textures on the building and such which we'll take a closer look at here in just a second 
Um, I mean, they're good enough. They, they, they get the point across, but there's nothing fantastic going on with textures on, on buildings and other assets in the game. There's very little depth to any of it. Most of it's just a, just a flat skin on the side of a square box. But uh, that being said, the game doesn't look terrible. There's, you're not going to find any you know, groundbreaking graphical <laughs> work going on here, but it gets the job done. It's, it's serviceable. Uh, if anything, the, the, the pop-in of the terrain can be a little annoying. And you'll see a few glitches of shadows here and there uh, where you'll see shadows flickering. Um, some of that you know, could be just where I need to make more adjustments to some of the settings to optimize it for my system. And some of it could just be that, you know, at the end of the day, this isn't a bleeding edge engine and they haven't put just, you know, ridiculous hours of AAA work into textures and things like that. But the world doesn't look bad. Uh, everything runs pretty smooth. The, the engine itself runs well. The game seems to run well. Don't get uh, a lot of frame rate drops. Uh, we will show off a couple of instances uh, here in a little bit when we get into the actual gameplay of some frame rate drops, but there seem to be some very specific instances revolving around those, and we'll talk about that a little bit once we get to that point. Here we're just roaming around, showing off sort of the inside of the buildings and stuff a little bit, and then I want to run over real quick here in just a second and show you one cool thing in the lobby. Now, of course, the uh, the probably the best part about the lobby, um, I have my voice chat turned all the way down, so I can't hear other people and what they're doing. Some of the most hilarious stuff in this game takes place in this lobby where people are cranking music, saying funny stuff, you know, dancing with their emotes. Uh, some of that stuff can be hilarious. Some of it can be annoying. So it's up to you. Uh, your mic is pushed to talk. You can turn the volume all the way down and not have to listen to anybody if you don't want to. That's the way I usually prefer my games. Uh, but I want to show off here the, the lamppost you probably saw running in. I'm not sure if that's some sort of glitch or what, but people can scale that lamppost somehow. And a couple of emotes. And now finally we're loading into the game. If you'll pay attention, uh, there is a frame rate counter in the top right hand corner. Now, I, I don't claim to have like the most bleeding edge rig right now, and I'm also recording 1080p video, so keep that in mind. But you'll notice that the frame rates are kinda all over the place. It isn't too terribly noticeable in game, surprisingly. Um, now, obviously I could tell that I wasn't getting steady frame rates, but the, the dips in game actually weren't so bad that I was just like, oh God, this is terrible. But if you look at the counter up there, man, they're just all over the place. If I get it close up to something, it's dropping down to like in the teens and then it'll jet back up to 60, 70. And it's just sort of all over the place. Uh, like I said, in game, it wasn't too terrible. Uh, I didn't have a lot of complaints about it. As a matter of fact, you know, I just kind of chalked it up to the fact that I'm recording, you know, I could use a couple of upgrades on my rig here and there. I didn't actually notice it was jumping around that much until I actually seen the counter in the video as I was playing it back. So that's something to keep in mind there. Better rigs obviously will run at a much steadier frame rate. And there again, I haven't spent a ton of time changing settings and optimizing things. So I could probably make some adjustments there for myself. Here you can see that you can play in first person. In first person, there is crouching. There are iron sights in the game. And as you run around, you can hear I'm having footsteps and you're gonna hear other people running around. The faster you go, the louder your footsteps are gonna be. If you're crouching, of course, you're gonna walk a lot quieter and have a better chance to sneak up on folks. Now, I'm not sure if you can hear it in game or not, but at this point while I was running around picking up some of the lootable items, I started hearing footsteps. So you see me squatting down, going around the corner seeing if I can figure out where the footsteps are coming from. Here we're showing off the map. You can see the yellow circle kind of shows the area of the map that's going to close in. Here, before long, though, the circle will move in and it'll show you where you got to be before the barrier closes in on you. But, uh, spoiler alert, this version of the video isn't going to last very long. This match did not last long at all. I was uh, hearing footsteps, and then I go around this corner and I hear shots fired, and I'm going to look out right here. And there's a dude running around out there, and he was shooting, and I thought he was shooting at me. And I was mistaken. So I go out of the building, go around the corner, thinking I'm going to come around and get the drop on him. And this guy here, I was not expecting at all. And I'm dead just a few <laughs> minutes into the game. Batty's going to be bad. As you can see, when I came around the corner and the firefight st sort of started, I, I got some pretty severe frame rate drops. Um, that being said, those aren't really, don't seem to be tied to battle or combat. It seems to be more tied to the barrier moving in around the world. Uh, it's not every time it happens, but sometimes when the barrier goes to move, I do get frame rate drops. And in the next match, you're going to see a pretty severe case of that at some point. 
So let's just go ahead and jump into the next match where I do quite a bit better the second time around. We actually managed to, managed to kill a couple of guys. We finished pretty high. I, I still have not been the last man standing. So like I said, you're not going to see New Fridge on the leaderboards. But we do a little better this time and we get to show off a little something else. So as you can see, spawns are random every time you appear somebody, somewhere else in the world. It does appear to be the exact same map uh, every time you play, but it is rather large, and you're going to spawn in somewhere different just about every time. As you can see, this time I got lucky, got a couple of different weapons, got a 900 armor bulletproof vest, and I also got a scope that I can attach to my weapons. Hitting F6 allows you to use any mods that you've picked up. As you can see, the only upgrade I've got right now is the scope, and we're going to come out and take a look at it. For some reason, it automatically puts you in first person when you attach a scope. I guess it assumes... If you're going to attach a scope, you want to play in first person? I don't know. I'm a third person guy myself. So as you can see, I'm going to swap that back out to the iron sights. And then I'm going to swap weapons here, which you can do by pushing one and two, swap your weapons. As you can see, med kits are on three. Uh, your different throwable items, grenades, flashbangs, things like that are on four. And then you've got little shields you can throw on the ground that are made out of wood, iron, all have different durability that you can kind of plop on the ground and sort of make a barrier for yourself. And those are on five. Well, we swapped weapons. We've uh, attached the scope to our other longer assault rifle here. I'm not sure what the name of it is. Sorry. I haven't played the game that much, but it, it seemed more fitting to put the scope on that one. So now we're looking at the barrier, seeing kind of where it's closing in at, and I've got to make a huge trek southwest because you can kind of tell by where the circle is closing in on the map, sort of the area it's going to close into finally, and it's not the same area every time. So I am sort of on the edge of it. And I'm definitely going to need to start making my way at least towards the area that it's going to start closing in on. I do not want to get caught outside that barrier because, of course, if it closes in on me, I'm going to start taking damage until I get on the inside of it. And it does quite a bit of damage. So if you stay outside of the barrier, you will die. You will take a ton of damage. So I've got to worry about uh, watching my flanks, make sure nobody's chasing me down, trying to keep an eye out for people who are ahead of me. Maybe I can take somebody out along the way. But also got to pay attention to that barrier, especially being right on the edge of it. I've got to get more towards where the center of it's going to be, or I'm just going to die before I see another single person. As you saw there, supply drops do spawn randomly, so those will make nice little skirmish points. People move in, try to pick up some sweet, sweet gear. Here, I found a guy. I'm going to take some shots. As you can tell, I'm not quite used to the recoil of this gun. I probably should have fired off a few shots uh, before I ran into somebody to get used to the recoil of the gun. I don't have any kind of suppressor or anything on it. All I've got is the scope for a mod. Uh, but we do manage to kill somebody. Hooray! <laughs> we didn't die in the first five minutes. So we're going to go up, and we get to loot all his stuff. As you can see, he's got uh, some med packs, some, some painkillers. Got a couple of weapons laying on the ground. Uh, the, the only thing that I didn't like here, this was the first time that I had looted a weapon, uh, it automatically swapped out the weapon I picked up for the weapon I had in my hand. And obviously, I just want a firefight with the weapon I had in my hand, so I'd rather keep it. Now, when I went to pick it back up, I have to go back in and reattach my scope. So at least when I swapped it, it didn't drop my scope on the ground. So if you've accidentally looted a weapon and don't realize it till you've run off somewhere, uh, you do will at least have your modifications that you can throw back on whatever weapons you've got at the time. So, so that's good. At least I didn't lose the scope or, or accidentally drop it and not be able to pick it back up. So here we are, we won our first firefight with the first person we ran into, and now I've looted all their stuff, and I've got to worry about that barrier again, because I really need to be running southwest here, and this giant gorge is in my way, so terrain is going to make a difference in how you play, where you go, when you go. So I'm worried about this barrier moving in on me, as you can see, it's, I'm, don't have to, I'm not going to die anytime soon, but it is closing in on me, I am out towards the outer edge of it, so I've got to keep making my way towards the center of where, it, where it's going to close into, and now I've got to go all the way around this gorge because I don't want to jump off in there and either A, die from fall damage or be caught in this gorge if somebody's up on one of these cliffs sniping me. So I'm definitely going to run around, kind of stick up against the cliffside here and hopefully provide a little bit of cover for myself and not get seen and picked off. Uh, definitely keep an eye on your flanks as you're running around. I think most of the times I've died in this game, obviously besides the one you saw earlier, uh, somebody's snuck up behind me without me realizing they were there while I was trying to go from cover to cover. And they picked me off in the back before I even realized really what's happened, had a chance to turn around and defend myself. So definitely keep an eye on your flanks. So we're going to jump ahead a little bit here because there were a couple of minutes of me literally just running around this gorge with nothing happening. And, uh, 
while it's fun to play and it can be intense like that, uh, there's no sense in watching that. Here you can see, I, here's a guy I caught off guard. He was just running across the big open field. He didn't manage to see me up against the, the cliffside that I was up against. I was sort of in the shadow, crouched down. So I've gotten some shots off on him. Uh, I'm not going to pretend to be the greatest shot in the world, but now I'm going to go hunt this sucker down because I've got him hurting. And I think I can win this, especially I've still got some pretty good armor going on because I found that really high spec armor. We're just going to hit fire because he was right around that corner and I managed to take him out. He's carrying that big med kit. I'm a little surprised he didn't use that before I came around the corner. He might have popped a couple of painkillers or something before I got there and didn't know how to swap to the med kit from the painkillers. But either way, we got some more fat loots. We've got 14, as you'll see in the bottom left hand corner, 14 painkillers now. Uh, that's quite a bit to keep ourselves held up here. Uh, there again, the the weapons, I think I'm just going to leave on the ground. I've won two firefights now with this uh, rifle I'm holding. So we're going to consider this our lucky charm and and stick with it for now. And then I'm, the gun that's on my back is just a backup in case I run out of ammo. Uh, I've actually got quite a bit of ammo now, as you can see. Uh, 23 in the clip, 160 it looks like uh, in my inventory. You can reload, just hit R. You reload just like any other game. Nice another little tent to uh, loot some more things in. And so far, so good. You'll see in the the top corner, or not the top corner, but the very top of the screen, there are the number remaining players left in the game. Every time somebody dies, you get a nice little notification. So-and-so has killed so-and-so. Uh, everybody in this game got to see Noob Fridge kill somebody at least a couple of times. So uh, pro-level gunplay here. And, and here again, we're going to go just back up against the cliffside, just uh, using it to maybe hopefully kind of disguise me so I'm not just out in the middle of an open field where somebody necessarily is. And if somebody's, you know, up on the cliffs directly above me, they'll, they'll have a harder time just shooting straight down at me if I stick to the cliffs trying to conceal myself. Now, probably my favorite part of this game is that my strategy for survival has been different just about every time I've played, at least a little bit. This time, as you can see, I spawned in. I'm staying close to the barrier, so I've had to keep moving the entire game, uh, especially stopping to scope things out and getting into a couple of firefights here. It's really started putting me up against the barrier. So I've really got to get a move on here, get to the center so I don't get caught outside the barrier. But there have been other games where I spawned into areas uh, that were closer to where the barrier was going to collapse to. And so I could literally just kind of scrounge around a little bit and then go find a spot and just hide and just watch people drop on the UI and get down to the last 15, 10, 15 people and be part of that last little scrum there at the end simply by location, RNG, put me in a good spot. So I just kind of hit out and didn't take any chances. Of course, that's not very exciting to watch. So <laughs> we decided to show some gameplay where I'm actually having to run around, shoot some fools, stay on the move because that's much more interesting to see. But there are different ways to play. There have also been times where I spawned into areas where there wasn't very good gear like I got this time. I got the 900 armor bulletproof vest this time. Uh, some of those are as low as 300. I've got a couple of 600. I believe this is probably the first 900 I've actually got my hands on. So that was a nice little drop for me, a little RNG on my side. That is definitely helping me win a couple of these firefights. So let's jump ahead one more time real quick and show you an example of what I was talking about earlier. What you're watching is not an error in the video editing process. That was the severe frame rate drop that we talked about earlier revolving around the barrier moving. Uh, I think during combat during the previous match, I'm pretty sure the barrier was moving about the time I got into combat. Hence the frame rate drop I had there that, that got me killed. I'm going to pretend like that's what killed me and it wasn't my badness. But there you can see that was a very severe frame rate drop during the barrier move. And there again, you know, you've seen two or three barrier moves during this video. So it doesn't happen every time. It's just every once in a while you get that. So, you know, if, if you see those problems happening, you may want to try to avoid being in combat uh, when you get that barrier move warning. Because uh, for me, at least, it uh, does cause issues every now and then. But not so bad where I just automatically hate the game because of it. And here we are closing in on the end of my little adventure. Uh, about 15 people left. I, I hear shots over to the left. I'm not sure if they're shooting at me or not. Uh, I'm finally getting myself in a spot where I'm a little more comfortable. I'm not on the edge of that barrier like I have been trying to get inside. And then there we go. I'm hunted down like the dog I am and killed 15th place. You know what? I'll take it. That's not bad at all. Pretty proud of myself here. I actually killed a couple of guys, got 15th place. A little bronze trophy, but hey, participation trophies, I'll take them. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen, your first look at Last Man Standing. It is available to download for free on Steam right now. 
you want to go over and check that out, a uh, nice little Battle Royale survival shooter. Uh, nothing wrong with it. I haven't seen any serious problems, no no obvious pay to win, anything in that nature. The game runs fairly well. There's some optimization issues that probably will be ironed out in the future, hopefully. And there's probably some things I could do on my end, play with the settings a little more to get things a little more steady on my end as well. But, but overall, the game runs fairly well. Um, no complaints. If, if you want to play some Battle Royale shooter, uh, it, it's very intense when you're in-game. Uh, lots of stuff going on. You're always having to watch your back, watch your sides, watch your front. Uh, it's definitely quite a bit of fun. So you can check it out for free on Steam. Last Man Standing. Ladies and gentlemen, I have been the new Fridge Troy Blackburn. Be sure to check out MMOBomb.com for all of your free-to-play MMO gaming news, information, first looks, and more. Thank you very much, and we will see you next time.